Today we will review sixth grade math lesson 3.1. This lesson will cover fraction division with like denominators. Here is your I can statement. I can divide fractions with like denominators with and without models and explain my work to others. Let's review the vocabulary for today. Here's a couple of vocabulary to write down. We have dividend, which is your numerator. And we have divisor, which is your denominator. If you look here, the dividend is your numerator, which is the number on the top of your fraction, and the divisor is your denominator. It's at the bottom of your fraction. So when we divide fractions with the same denominator, it is equivalent to dividing the numerators. So notice that we're talking about with the same denominator only in this entire lesson. When dividing fractions with the same denominator, you can simply write a new fraction using the information given in the problem. So we can put the numerator of the dividend on top and the numerator of the divisor on the bottom. So let's look at the example here. Um, the examples I'm going over today will be similar to your homework on page 67 if you wanna do those problems by yourself. And I also encourage you to pause this video and complete these problems on your own first, and then go ahead and review the video afterwards. So our first example is a word problem, and it says a cookie recipe calls for 1 8 cup of butter. If Amy has 7 8 cups of butter, how many batches of cookies can she make? So when I read word problems like this, the first thing I wanna, find is the total or the whole amount. So we know that Amy has seven cups of butter, so that's the whole amount or the total. When we're dealing with division, we always want to identify that. So we know that the entire thing she has is seven eighths cup of butter. So if I was going to draw a picture to represent that, I could do my eighths here. And I know here that re represents the seven eighths as the whole. And I know that each one of these is one eighth. And I know that we're only dealing here with seven eighths, but that is our whole amount this problem. So what we can look at is if we have 7 eighths as our whole amount, we know that's really 1 eighth plus 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 1 eighth. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So in this word problem, it's saying how many cookie recipes called a cookie recipe calls for one eighth cup butter, and if Amy has seven eighths of cups of butter, how many batches can she make? So in this word problem, when we write seven eighths is gonna be divided by one eighth, we're asking ourselves how many one eighths. Well, I'm gonna actually say how many groups of one eighths? That's what I want to say. How many groups of one eight are in the total of seven eighths? That's what we're really talking about here when we're dividing one eighths divided by seven eighths. So here's step one. We want to write down and identify a model for this problem. We write the expression 7 eighths divided by 1 eighths. Then we do step number two. It says identify the numerators of each problem. So the numerator of the first one is 
7. And the numerator of the divisor is 1. So they're saying the numerator here is 7 eighths and the numerator of the divisor is 1. So then because they have the same denominator, we can then say the numerator of the dividend is 7 and the numerator of, di of the divisor is 1. And so we do 7 over 1 is 7. So that's our answer. Amy can make 7 batches of cookies with 7 eighths cup of butter. Let's try the next one. Raymond wants to run 5 sixteenths of a mile after school. The school's track is 3 sixteenths of a mile long. How many laps around the track will Raymond have to run? So it's saying he wants to run this amount, so that's his whole amount or that's his total that he wants to run. But the track is 3 sixteenths of a mile long. So it's saying how many laps will we have to run? So we know we will then take the whole amount, 15 sixteenths divided by 3 sixteenths. In this problem, they are saying how many groups of 3 sixteenths are there in the total, which is 15 sixteenths. So how many groups of 3 sixteenths are there? So because these have the same denominator, step 1 says I take the numerator of my divisor and I put that here. Step two says I take the numerator of my dividend, I mean my divisor there, and then I put it here. And then 15 divided by three, this fraction bar means to divide, 15 divided by three is five laps. Let's do some more examples below. So on the first one, again, I'm noticing these have the same denominator. So on the first problem, I'm locating what is the numerator of my dividend and what is the numerator of my divisor. And then I go ahead and I put them over each other. The numerator of the dividend and then the numerator of the divisor. Let's try the next one. The numerator of the dividend is 3. The numerator of the divisor is 1. So go to question 4. Again, they have the same denominator, so this applies. I can take the numerator of the dividend over the numerator of the divisor. And this is an improper fraction here, so I can say 7 divided by 2. So this is saying 2 goes into 7 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract, bring down. So I have a remainder of 1. So it goes in 3 times, and your remainder over your divisor here. Okay, then we have here, we take the numerator of the dividend and then the numerator of the divisor and 3 goes into 15. How many times? 5. We always want to put our fractions in simplest form. Let's do the next one. We have the numerator of the dividend is 3. The numerator of the divisor is 5. So your answer is 3 fifths. Question 7. 1 twelfth divided by 11 twelfths. Because they have the same denominator, I can take the numerator of the dividend and put it over the numerator of the divisor. 
That is our lesson for module three, lesson one for grade six.